Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you a pre-recorded online paper crafting class where I'll walk you through the steps of how to make a freestanding spinner card using products that will debut tomorrow from the January through April 2024 mini catalog. The products are from the Lighter Than Air Suite. The suite can be found on pages 32 through 34 of that mini catalog and the suite includes the hot air balloon stamp set, the coordinating hot air balloon dies, the rainbow adhesive back gems, this fun twine, it's called Baker's Twine 3 color pack, and the lighter than air designer paper. You get 48 sheets, six, I'm sorry, eight of six different double-sided designs. And just see, you can do so much with these really pretty prints, right? This is the suite that my all-star group is featuring this month in our exclusive video class bundle that you can purchase, or you can even earn it with a qualifying purchase in the month of January. I wasn't able to be live with you today, but I did not want to pass up the opportunity to share yet another creative idea with you at my usual live time. And of course, it's featuring lots of wonderful Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using these in addition to the suite and a few others, and you'll be able to find links to those products in my video description. And anytime I share during my videos, if I forget to tell you how to find something, chances are if you go to the video description, you're going to be able to get that information or at least get to my blog where you can find additional information. So sit back, put your feet up, and watch how I go from this to this. And if you enjoy watching, be sure that you click the thumbs up, share with your friends, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you can see even more creative ideas that I share each week. Let's start with our card base. So you can see that we have like a little X that's formed at the top. Some people call this an X card, um, but I've, I've seen lots of videos that are calling this a freestanding spinner card. The X is formed by um, having four pieces of base card stock that are glued together. So let's do that preparation first. Now half of eight and a half um, in this direction is four and a quarter, so we would normally cut in half, but I'm gonna also save us some time by scoring halfway uh, between that amount. So half of four and a quarter is two and an eighth. So we're gonna score all the way through at two and one eighth inch. We'll do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll cut And then we can cut these two pieces in half. Half of 11 is five and a half. And we're making this spinner card fit into a medium basic white envelope, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, or it fits that size card. So all these pieces now are scored and cut to that size. We need additional Blackberry Bliss cardstock because we need to make some rings. So we're going to die cut and we're going to bring in a couple extra sets of dies for this card. Stampin' Up! products, we have this, these new deckle dies that everyone's in love with. I am too. And we're going to use the 246th one from the smallest or it's the ninth one from the largest. And then we'll also be using the dies called uh, Stylish Shapes dies. And I believe it's this one. Hang on a minute. Yes. So we'll be using this one. And we'll also be using the one that's slightly smaller as a guide kind of circle. So you'll want to have those uh, dies pulled aside and ready. Additional papers will be from the uh, More Dazzle 6x6 designer paper and you can see we've got uh, a champagne looking metallic uh, fun glittery paper. Uh, champagne and gold are the two colors that come in that pack. We'll be using basic white cardstock and we'll be using these designer papers. Now 
we're doing a slight change. We're going to change out the yellow to this rainbow stripe just to change it up a bit, just to make it more fun. Now these pieces in here are smaller than two and an eighth inches because remember we scored it two and an eighth inch. So we're going to go slightly smaller than that. And because we want this eighth of an inch um, all the way around and then just a slight um, a slight narrowing through the middle so that these two pieces together sort of make an eighth of an inch, we're going to cut slightly smaller than two and an eighth inches. We're going to cut at two inches plus a sixteenth. Okay, so our two inches will cut off that eighth from the one side and our sixteenth inch will cut off in the middle, if that makes sense. So we're going to slice once and again just under two inches, slice twice and now we have our two pieces but they're tall so we're going to trim them down. We can just stack them together because designer paper is a little bit thinner than cardstock. We'll just stack them together and we'll cut at five and a quarter inches. Five and a quarter inches is eighth of an inch in both directions smaller than five and a half. So we take off an eighth this way and we take off an eighth that way and we have five and a quarter inches. And now we have our two papers that will go here. Oops, flip them around. There we go. Those two papers that will go there. Now let's do the same thing with our panels here. And we're going to pull that from, we need actually one and a third sheets of the designer paper now. So we're going to pull that from here. I'm going to once again stack these together. In fact, let's trim up first. There we go, five and a quarter inches, and then just under two, just under two, and just under two. If these were exactly two inches, we wouldn't have to worry about this three sixteenths of an inch, <laughs> but there we go. All right, and then this scrap is for die cutting. We also need some white panels on the back. We're going to cut those to the same sizes that we just cut our other designer paper pieces. Next, let's stamp our balloon. So we're going to grab our stamps from the Hot Air Balloon stamp set. And we'll grab our inks. We're using Balmy Blue, Azure Afternoon, and Calypso Coral. So the first thing that I'm going to stamp is the balmy blue and we're going to stamp that twice because we actually have two balloons right and then we'll stamp our azure afternoon color for the other portion of the balloon And when you stamp this, you want to look at the base of the balloon, um, the part that starts the balloon where the air goes in, and you want that to connect to the bottom of the balmy blue stripes, and then you slowly bring that stamp down and into the imagery. We'll do that again on this side. And then we need two other images and that's the basket part of the balloon. We'll stamp that in Calypso Coral twice. So everything is two times. And then we'll be able to die cut them. In addition to die cutting those, we're going to die cut our flags that hang down. And we're going to die cut the inner circles of all of these sections. So we need four of those. I'm going to use my uh, post-it tape to connect my dies to the images so that they won't move on me when I'm die cutting. And if you'll see here, I've got these two dies, the stitched one and the deckled one, and they fit within each other. So I'm going to tape them down. We have 
Platform number one, die adapter number two, cutting plate number three. And we'll just tape that onto the actual platform so it doesn't move. And what we have when we take these off are these nice thin little rings. All right, so we have all of these beautiful pieces die cut, but we still have more die cutting to go. As you can see, we'll have to cut circles into all of the four uh, base sections. So let's set our die cutting machine aside for a minute and bring in those pieces, our bone folder, and let's start adding our panels onto each of the base pieces. I'm going to recommend that you use multi-purpose liquid glue. I have mine in a precision tip pot bottle. I think that it's going to give you the best um, results because the whole surface or most of the surface will be glued down onto our cardstock layers. And when we die cut our circle, we won't have anything pulling away or gapping. We want an eighth of an inch on the outer edge and the top and bottom and that gives us just a little bit of room before we get to the score mark. Now if you're someone who likes to stamp before gluing we can do that now. This is going to lie right here and if you picture a circle being placed there we can go ahead with our sentiment that's going to get stamped onto the white panel and it says hang in there. Isn't that clever? Doesn't have to be exact, but you want it to be parallel to the bottom of the card layer right here. Okay, so it's nice and straight. And now we're looking at the outer edges again to make sure that everything looks good. And through the middle, you can see we have about an eighth of an inch in there as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of the other three panels using the designer paper. Now these two pieces I made sure that we had a flowing design, but on our striped paper, because I cut one from an extra piece, I had to just kind of mismatch them, right? So it's no big deal. We're going to die cut now from this one. We'll start with this one and using our post-it tape we will make sure that it is centered. So we have to do some measuring and you want to be as accurate as possible when you put this piece down. And I've got about three quarters of an inch on each side from the outer part of the die to the um, to the edge of the card. We'll tape these down and then we'll measure one more time. And that looks good. That looks good. The more accurate you can be with getting your die to be centered this way, the better. Because this one is going to connect to, well, to this one and then to that one. And, and the more centered you are, the more perfect you are with these dies, the easier it's going to be to put our rings on. Because all of them are going to connect to each other and you want them to line up. So let's place this into our machine. I 
and cross our fingers. Now we're going to lay this piece over the top of our three others, one at a time, and we're going to trace. Okay, so here's where I ran into an issue. I took that same die and I laid it down on here, but it made my circle that I just drew disappear. So the next step that I took was to lay this die in the middle. And with this die, I took and traced on the inside because this inside is going to be cut out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You could, you know, write a little scribble in there and it, it will be eliminated. So we're doing two circles on all of these four pieces because we need some kind of guide to help us lay that die back down and cut out our circle. And a sharp pencil is helpful for this. So then you'll think, okay, now I can lay this on here and get it cut out more accurately. But I still think that there's too big of a gap. And so what I did is because this was used to trace rather than the cutout circle, you can still see the pencil line, right? So we're going to connect these two pieces. And now you see just a small gap between the two of them. And we're going to connect them together with the post-it tape. Pick them up and lay them on here so that now you can see that line that we drew on the inside is really close to the die and more accurate. And we can tape these in place and die cut. So we're going to do that on all three of these layers. And sometimes that sticky tape, when it presses down on there, it can um, add a little bit of adhesive. So you can just take like a, a, a gum eraser or whatever and take it off. This is an adhesive eraser. You can find a link for that in my favorite things section of my blog. So I'm just going to clean up these pieces real quick. Now all of these rings can be thrown away or the creative side of your brain can figure out what to do with them. Just erase the pencil lines and, I don't know, create a new card. But I'm going to set them aside for now and grab our twine. <clears throat> we have some twine from the uh, Baker's Twine 3 color pack. And I'm just going to grab and cut off an ample amount here so it goes beyond the top and the bottom of the card. And I think I'm going to attach it to this piece. You can pick any piece, but I would do either the front or the back just because I think your card is going to fold better if you're adding your uh, hot glue in that way. So let's take our hot glue now and we're going to attach our twine. So we're going to put just a little bit of hot glue up here and we're going to set the twine in there and we're going to pat it down so it's a very, very thin amount of hot glue. We don't want to have a real thick bubble in here. Um, this is the strongest glue. We could use other adhesives, but um, this one will really bond, I feel. So uh, another idea that I saw, um, by the way, from uh, Sam Kel Kelcott from Mixed Up Crafts, is she used, instead of twine, she used some elastic thread. And it was a really neat result because I think that you can wind up your um, your little image in the center a little bit more if you have stretchy string going through. So I'm just going to set that down in there and I'm going to pat around it to flatten out the glue a bit. 
which I think I patted too much or patted before it was actually dry. That might cause too much of a bulk. I'm going to redo that. Okay, this time just a thin amount. And we're going right along that score line that's going through the center. There we go. Let's do that again, but down lower here. And we just need a little bit right there. And we want the twine to be tight, but not pulling so that it takes it away from the adhesive. So now we have our adhesive um, on the two ends, right across the score line. We've got our twine in there. Again, elastic thread was a genius idea, but it still works somewhat with the twine. Okay, we have that done. Now, the next step is to attach all of our pieces together. So we're gonna glue them, because we wanna make this X design here. We're gonna glue them together. This one's the front. Okay, so then this one would go next, here. This one would go here. You getting it? And this one would go here. So we have to attach the two sides first. And when you attach the two sides, you want to make sure that your edges are all lined up. As you lay this piece down, you also want to make sure that the two middle sections here do not overlap each other. They just go right up next to each other, but that hopefully these edges still line up. And my recommendation with the outside one is to add it to one side first, and then once that's in place and everything lines up, add it to the other side. A big thank you to the person who emailed me, the viewer that emailed me, asking if I could demonstrate in a video how to make a fun card like this. And a big thank you to those people who have come before me and shared how to make this card. Um, I learned great tips and ideas from you and I could apply them to um, the size card and using Stampin' Up! products. Oh, this is looking great. Okay, my next step is to take all of these rings and we're gonna cut them in half. So I've got one side, and let's just take and use our grid lines here to kind of guess. It doesn't have to be accurate because I'm going to have um, some excess anyways. So now I've got all these half circles here, and I'm going to take and flip them to the back side, add multi-purpose liquid glue. Again, that's what this is, and it's in a precision tip bottle. And I'm just going to run a length of that around the outer edge and connect that in the space surrounding the circle like that. Do you see how we have ex an extended amount going beyond? So I've added it around my circle and then I have this little excess here that I'm just going to snip off. So it lines up with the designer paper. You don't want your ring to go through the whole middle of the card because what will happen is it'll, um, it'll make your card buckle. And I'm going to do that to all four sides. Now 
This tweezers from our embossing additions toolkit came in very handy for picking up those tiny pieces. All right, next it's time to adhere. So we're going to grab these little guys, these baskets, and I'm just going to put a tiny little drop of glue onto the ends of each one and stick that underneath. And we'll do that to both of those. And it's okay that they're barely attached because we're going to connect everything together um, using dimensionals, a whole row of dimensionals. Let's add these to the front of each balloon. They're going to be mirrors of each other, so this one will go in this direction. Decide which balloon you think looks the best. This one to me looks better. It just seems clear. So that one's going to be shown on the front, which means I want to attach it first. So I'm going to grab my dimensionals and I have mini dimensionals in addition to my regular. So we're just going to connect. Let's grab a regular one now and make sure that that regular one grabs onto the little um, extensions from the basket. We're just running these up the middle. It's not the perfect middle, is it? <laughs> it's good enough. All right, so now peel off the release paper from the back side. We're going to add this right here so that it's lined up. And I'm not looking at the dimensionals, I'm looking at the actual balloon and pressing that in place. And then I want to have even more dimensionals because the twine is going to push away a bit when I connect the two balloons. It's not going to bond everything together perfectly. So I'm adding a couple more on each side. like that. And we're going to sandwich them together. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Yay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed what I had to share there. Now, if you if you don't want to get in a whole nother set of dimensionals like these mini ones, you can always cut these down if you'd like to but i do have both of them listed in my supplies remember to refer to the description of the video for the supplies that i've used you can also look for a link to my blog post in that description so that you can see close-up photos of what i've created for you today let's let's test it out should we okay let's turn it to the front here and you just twist 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 you put it inside the envelope and then when they open it <laughs> so fun, right? I love it. I love it. I love it. So remember to refer to the description of my video for the links to these products. You can also find a link to my blog post where you'll be able to see close up photos of the card that I created today, see the measurements, see a visual supply list, that sort of thing. Please join me next week on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time for my next online paper crafting class. Also, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, for the thumbs up, and for sharing this video. In the meantime, have a great week, and now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.